Welcome everyone to this special edition of the UNAMI Institute of Astronomy Colloquium. Today, it is a pleasure to have Santi Roca Fabrega from the Universidad Complutense in Madrid. Santi is a well-known person by our community since he performed a large fraction of his PhD thesis in our institute. Currently, Santi is a member of the Agora Collaboration. Agora stands for a high resolution galaxy simulation comparison initiative. He will present the latest results and data from the Agora collaboration uh, during 30 minutes, uh, a 30 minutes talk. And at the end, he will have a session of questions from the audience. If you have a question, please raise your hand in Zoom. Uh, Santi, please, you can start with your presentation. Okay, thank you. A lot Octavio for this uh, nice introduction. So yes, I will present today the the results of the Agora, the latest results of the Agora collaboration. Let me share the screen now. Okay, perfect. So uh, just to start, first of all, uh, I want to mention that uh, this is uh, um, the work, the project, the, the work that I am presenting today is basically uh, the result of a collaborative effort. I am just uh, presenting the results that we obtained together in after many hours of collaboration with a lot of people. Most of them are listed below as the code readers of this uh, project. And um, to start this presentation, I will make first a short summary of what the Agora project is, just for the people that doesn't know uh, about it. So the Agora project is basically uh, this collaborative effort in where what we tried is to set uh, an infrastructure and um, a collaboration in where many people from around the world working with different numerical codes for galaxy formation work together to know which of the results they are obtaining are more code dependent than uh, another. For example, you have in this slide, uh, the, the spirit of the collaboration summarized it in, in one slide. This slide was made by the project coordinator that is Jihun uh, Kim. And in here, you can find, first of all, the infrastructure we are using in the Agora collaboration. Also, the main goal, uh, the team that basically is, uh, is as big as 160 or more people uh, from around the world, from more than six institutions. And nine different code groups are participating on this collaboration. Um, these nine codes are the ones of most used in the community for the production of this kind of uh, uh, formation and evolution simulations. You can find also in this slide at the bottom uh, left, the contact if you uh, will to participate on this project, you just need to send an email to the Santa Cruz Galaxy at uh, gmail.com. In this project also, we uh, already published three papers and I will go very fast through each one of these papers we already published. Basically the collaboration um, started in 2012 uh, and during the kickoff meeting and the first meetings, we set uh, what is the main goals of the, of the project. And basically the, the main goals are, first of all, to uh, set this infrastructure for the comparison of high resolution uh, galaxy formation simulations using different numerical platforms. And this, as I told you, is very important because it's to make the same simulations from the same initial conditions uh, using different codes and to analyze the differences and the similarities that arise from this comparison. Also, one of the big goals of the collaboration was to generate uh, common isolated and cosmological initial conditions. This is something that was done from the very beginning for the first uh, comparisons we did. Also, what we will is to analyze these results uh, from the simulations in a fair way using similar uh, or, or the same analysis tools. And also to do this analysis, not for a single epoch, but for a wide range of epochs for the whole evolution of the of this, uh, of, for example, a galactic halo from the very high redshift to the very low redshift, and also in multiple dimensions, not focusing in the single parameters, but exploring different sets of parameters. For example, gas temperature density, but also a dark matter distribution, stellar distribution, and star formation. Also important in this project is that we don't we do not know we don't don't want to focus in a single one-time code uh, comparison. What we want is to provide the community of the tools to make uh, uh, this multi-platform um, comparison for 
all the new codes that are appearing, that are being generated by the community. Also to make several um, science uh, cases, we, we call them science cases, that is comparison with, for example, observations of what we observe uh, in our models. And uh, the important goal here, of, or why we are doing this, is basically because if we know which parameters are more robust uh, within the, the different codes. So if you use different codes and you obtain the same result, this means that this is, uh, the results are robust. And also if we find that some parameters are very, very highly sensitive to the numerical code you use, with this, we can kind of raise the predictive power of the numerical models because we will know which parameters uh, really converge when using different numerical codes. So the predictions will be robust and which ones you need to be careful when comparing these results. Uh, with observations. And something that I think the most important part of this collaboration is basically that we want to um, not only maintain, but generate uh, a, a, an ambient of collaboration, of, um, of uh, sharing results, of uh, uh, discussing the results from different codes. And this is very important because all the people that work with simulations knows that usually each code group works independently and sometimes kind of fighting with the other uh, code groups. And the idea of the hour is to put all these people together, to work together, to generate similar models, and to discuss which um, implementations uh, are the best ones inside the different numerical codes. So inside this Agora project, after two years it started, it started in 2012. In 2014, two years after starting, uh, we published, published the first paper. In this first paper, we call it the flagship paper. Um, we presented the project goals and perspectives for the Aura project. And also we did a proof of concept uh, test that is basically to run uh, a collapse of dark matter structures uh, using nine different versions of the participating codes and focusing in one halo, uh, low mass, 1.7, 10 to the 11 solar masses of the tip of zero. For this first work, uh, we used it, uh, three uh, AMR codes. You have here at the bottom um, left, uh, ART2, ENZO, at, at the very bottom right, uh, RAMSYS. These are three AMR codes. And the other ones, you can see four different versions of gadget and also gasoline and TKD graph. And the main results of this paper were that after working uh, with the simulation, with uh, the simulations of collapsing dark matter structures, after correcting some of uh, some minor errors inside the, each one of the codes, we finally got a very good convergence on the density profile of the dark matter halo. This is something you can see in the panel at the right. And you can see that the profile adjusts very well to the same curve from all the nine different participant codes. And in the middle, you can see the, the opposite part that is something that is not converging. That is, for example, something we noticed is that in the AMR codes, we generate a little bit less low massive uh, dark matter halos than uh, for the SPH codes. This is something very well known and something that we also observed in the last uh, project that, that is the one I am going to present today. In the second paper, the paper we call the isolated this paper, that was again two years after the first, the first paper, we generated a set of nine uh, simulations, again, using nine codes. These nine codes are different from the nine that appeared in the first, the first paper. And here what we did was to set the initial conditions for an isolated galactic disk with a gaseous halo and we let this evolve. And then we compared how these disks, these, disks, these galactic disks that are Milky Way-like disks, um, differ from one, con one code to the other. What is important from this set, most of the parameters in the simulation, both for the star formation, for the supernovae feedback. So we try to get conversion at the end. Um, you can see that more or less we got convergence, although again, some differences can be observed. For example, at the bottom panels, you see the distribution of stars and you can see that there are different clumps in different positions for each one of the, of the codes. The data from this second uh, uh, paper is already available. We published it um, in 2020. You can see here at the bottom right, uh, the link to the archive in where we, we announced the, 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 the data release and many other code groups from 2020 uh, to now, uh, using this data to make new follow-up papers. And something that is uh, important also that we developed during the publication of these two first papers is the infrastructure, the, the Agora infrastructure. 
it is, this is very important because it uh, allows us to continue with, with our fair comparisons among the different numerical codes. This has three different blocks, this is infrastructure. The first one that is the initial conditions generator that was presented by Oliver Hahn in 2011. And this is the music code. Uh, we are commonly using it to generate the initial conditions uh, inside the collaboration. The second big part of this infrastructure is the YT analysis tools. Uh, these were, were, were presented by uh, Matthew Turk in 2011. And this allows, allows us to read the outputs from all the numerical codes that are participating in Agora and to analyze them in the same way using the same tool so we can make a fair comparisons and to make uh, uh, equivalent diagnostics from each one of the numerical codes. So this is a very important part also of the, of the Agora project. And related with this, also now uh, there is a new piece of software for the analysis that is, that is called Trident that allows us to generate um, uh, sidelines observations, for, for example, from uh, uh, background clusters. And the last block of this infrastructure is the Grackel uh, radiative transfer code that allows us to compute in the same way inside each one of the numerical codes, the cooling and heating of the gas, both in the intergalactic medium and in the galactic medium, and also to include, for example, sources of uh, um, ionizing uh, radiation, or for example, also the self-shielding of the very dense uh, regions. This can be now directly implemented inside each one of the numerical codes, allowing us to reduce again the number of pre-parameters we are using inside the, each one of the codes. So that uh, with this introduction, now I go with, to the to the latest results in the Agora project. That is what we call the the Cosmo Run. This was published uh, two weeks uh, ago. It was accepted in the APJ, and also you have the link to the archive here at the at the bottom. And for this uh, for this project for the Cosmo Run project, that is this third project inside the, inside the, the Agora project. Uh, we devoted more than four years of co collaborative work. You can see that to generate a cosmological simulation and to reduce the, the possible variables that are inside a so complex a model like a cosmological simulation that includes also the hydrodynamic, we needed not the usual two years that we, we needed for the first paper and for the second paper, but it was four, four and a half years to get this uh, work done. So it was a huge amount of work. Also, we did more than 30 uh, online telecoms, very productive with a, with a very um, big and good discussions among the different participants. So very, very good uh, uh, meetings. Also, we did three summer workshops in where we discussed a lot the progress of the project. Also, for example, we discussed it to split the current, uh, the Cosmo Run in two. The, the original goal was to analyze directly the CGM at the low redshift. But finally, we decided to present first this paper that is a more technical paper. And in the future, in the very close future, uh, the analysis of the CGM uh, inside the, the, the models we present here today. And also we needed to use more than 100 million CPU hours for all the calibration steps that I will present and also to get the final model. And this was done by seven code groups. And this is probably the most important part here that is the first time in the community we have seven code groups using the same initial conditions to simulate the formation of a Milky Way mass halo uh, down for the moment at redshift of four from the common initial conditions. So after summarizing what the Agora project Cosmo Run is, uh, let me go to the first part of the results we are presenting. Um, we have two big results. The first one is the calibration. The, the calibration at the end was so, some kind of subproduct of this process of generating the final model. And basically, um, the idea was to set uh, um, a, seri a series of four steps that allows us to reduce the tunable parameters inside simulations. Um, it is true that this is not the only possible calibration process, cannot be the optimal one, but it's the one uh, that we ended, we, uh, we ended up with after many, many telecoms, many, many discussions. And the important part of the calibration is not the steps, but the comparisons we need to do in each one of them and the scientific discussion and the insight we gain each time we analyze the differences we observe in each one of the calibration steps. So I will go now very fast to each one of the calibration steps we ended up with. The first one is the calibration step one, the, the, the one we call the pure collapse. In this case, in all codes, we, we start in initial, uh, the same initial conditions with gas and dark matter, 
but we do not allow to the, uh, the, the gas to cool or to heat by uh, radiative cooling or heating. We do not include the ultraviolet background. We do not include uh, self-shielding. And we also do not include the pressure floor, the star formation, or the supernovae feedback. It's basically a pure collapse uh, um, in a cosmological context. So in this case, what we wanted is to test uh, that the basic physics are implemented well in all the codes and that we get conversions when only the basic physics are applied. Um, also, this allows us to study how the resolution and the refinement strategy inside, for example, the EMR codes can have or not an impact on, for example, the heating uh, in the shocks when the structures uh, collapse. And for here in this uh, in this panel, you can see at the bottom a multi-panel in where in each column you have a different code. In the first row, you see the density of gas. In the bottom row, the temperature of gas. And you see that there is a very good convergence in density at the small differences uh, on the temperature. And I will talk about these small differences uh, in the calibration three step and what we are doing uh, to try to solve this problem of, not a problem, to try to understand these kind of differences we observe in the temperature uh, states. In the second calibration step, now we activate the radiative cooling heating, we activate the ultraviolet background, we also activate the self shielding of the very dense regions, and all this implemented using the Grackel software, the version 3.1.1. So this calibration step two, the main goal of the step is to um, really test, to check that the Grackel software is well implemented in each one of the codes. And also at the same time, to make a sanity check on how Grackle is behaving. So if Grackle has the, the correct routines and is well uh, uh, coded also this, this uh, software. Uh, what we could see, for example, during the process of, uh, of this calibration step two, is that at very high densities, due to um, the, the interpolation that you need to do, because you, you don't have, for example, the very detailed cooling and heating of gas for a specific density, but you have the cooling and heating rates for a binet distribution of densities and temperature, which is something you can see at the bottom uh, left. What happens is that due to this discretization, when you look at the temperature density uh, uh, parameter space, that is the plots you have at the right, at the very high densities that you observe uh, in some of the codes, for example, in gadget three or gear, but this also has been observed in Ramses and other codes, uh, you see these kind of cooling tails that are an artifact due to the discretization. Um, this is not a problem in a cosmological simulation like, like the one we are using here, because as soon as you turn on the, 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 the star formation, the gas that is above this dashed line, this vertical dashed line, is used for star formation, so you never reaches this very high density uh, uh, region. So these uh, cooling tails are not really a, a big problem for, for us here. Although we argue that we need to improve the, um, this, this interpolation to, to go to higher degrees of interpolation to solve this problem, and also probably to use um, better sample tables for the, for the cooling and heating rates. Once completed the calibration step two, we can go to the calibration step three. And in this calibration step, what we do is a part of having, again, the radiative cooling and heating uh, with Grackle that we already tested that is working. We now activate the pressure floor that avoids the, the fragmentation, the spurious fragmentation of gas, and also the star formation. And we impose that the threshold for the star formation in all the codes is one atom per centimeter to the field. Um, apart from that, we let some flexibility to each one of the code groups to uh, change a little bit, for example, the efficiency, of, for example, uh, the, sorry, the efficiency, the, not the efficiency, but the, the stochasticity in the case they implement the star formation in a stochastic uh, way to finally get a convergence on the stellar mass at respect of seven. Um, this is the only thing we look for in this calibration step three, three, and you can see the result at the bottom left in this panel in where you can see the stellar mass growth uh, for each one of the codes. Each one of the curves is uh, one code, and you can see the stellar mass growth from the redshift of uh, 13 or 12 down to redshift of seven. And you can see that within 0.3 dex, all the codes converge on the stellar mass. This is what we uh, look at for, this convergence of a stellar mass at the redshift of seven. And why this is so important? Well, because if we want to make a fair comparison, we need that all the codes generate similar stellar mass uh, at high redshift. So they have a similar mass assemblage history 
at high rate because this will um if you have a much larger mass at high rate you will produce much stronger feedback and the galaxy will be completely different so the halo will be completely different so we need it to check that for only at least the stellar mass at high rate is the same for all the codes um in this multi-panel you have at the bottom uh right you can see again for each one of the codes in each column at the top the densities in the middle panels the temperatures in the bottom panels the uh, stellar surface density you can see the stellar surface density more or less converge in all codes you have more or less the same structures in similar positions so the positions of the stellar structures and also the total stellar mass within the video radius is similar this is kind of convergence but again we can see some divergence not in density that is the the top panel but yes in temperature that is the middle panel and although this can look dramatic when you we activate the supernovae feedback that is the larger amount of energy that is uh, released in this uh, in this region um, this uh, this heating you can see here is only the result of the the shock heating for example um this one that the observe here these differences you observe here will be completely uh, um minor uh, when confronted with the supernovae feedback the different the differences in the supernovae feedback nonetheless uh in a follow up project we are planning to study the origin of these very small differences but at least uh, but at the end differences and we are preparing a technical paper in where we, and where we will study this uh this topic but for the current project this was not a, a big problem and finally uh we have the calibration step four once completed the other three calibration steps we now activate the supernovae feedback and something very important here is that we ask all the code groups to use the supernovae feedback as uh, similar as possible to the one they use in their daily science outside the ARA project. Because what we want is to see the, uh, the results of using more or less the same strategy that the code group is using in their daily science here in Agora and compare the results when using the same initial conditions. So we ask it, all the codes to use the supernovae feedback as close as the one they usually use in their uh, daily science. Uh, this is what we call the favorite uh, supernovae feedback and um, the only thing we ask all the code groups again is to reach a stellar mass at redshift of four that is compatible with the one predicted uh, by semi-empirical models of abundant match at redshift of four that is in between for this kind of halo of milky way mass halo at redshift of four is more or less in between 10 to the 9 and five times 10 to the 9. And you can see here at the bottom left in this panel again the different curves are the different codes this is the mass growth uh, with redshift and you can see that at the end at redshift of four all the codes converge within this uh, 0.5 depth um the the gray um shadow uh, region you see at redshift of four is the the right the range accepted as a prediction for the from the abundant matching the semi-empirical models and okay, um, after completing the calibration steps, we get the final model that now can be used to do a more science-oriented uh, project. And at this point is in where we uh, invite new codes to participate to the Agora project. Now is the moment. Uh, we have this very clear calibration strategy with these four uh, steps. We ask new code groups uh, to follow these four calibration steps and to join the future that will be many science-oriented projects. For that, we will provide technical help to complete the calibration steps. We will also give them the access to all the data we have from the other code groups. So they make they can make the comparison and they can be sure that the, they are completing the, the, the calibration process. And also we will give them access to the overall work, workspace. And also we will invite them to the next science oriented meetings, online meetings that usually you need an invitation to, to access to, to them. So um, the idea, now is to make to generate this reference library of models that will be the result of following this calibration step that can um, increase the predictive power of the numerical simulations um, if we have more codes participating we will have an enriched comparison in the future and we'll have a better uh, view of how the different um, results depend or not on the numerical codes we are using and now going to the last part of the of the talk is the second big part of uh, results we are presenting and is basically that we generate for the first time in the community um, a simulation and redshift of four a cosmological simulation including the hydrodynamics high resolution 
of a Milky Way mass halo at this redshift of four. This is the first time that is done in the community for seven different uh, numerical codes that are widely used in the community of, uh, of galaxy formation and evolution. Um, we only present in this paper the first result from five snapshots, although we have now more than 200 snapshots from several of the codes that are participating and down to redshift of two, but this will be presented in, the, in a future uh, project. We expect conversions on the stellar mass and dark matter distributions. And something very important and that needs to be clear here is that we expect big differences on the distribution and temperature and density of the gas. Why? Because we are using supernovae feedback recipes that are completely different from one code to the other. So we expect, we do not expect conversions on the uh, gas properties in this uh, compiler. Something that is different from paper two. The, this, from these first results, for example, here in the gas properties, I will go first to one panel, uh, later to the second panel. The first panel I will talk about is the one of temperature, that is this multi-panel plot at the right. The second panel is the density, uh, the gas density, that is the panel at the, uh, sorry, the, the panel at the left is the temperature, the panel at the right is the gas density. And for the gas temperature, you can see here this multi-panel, in where each column again is uh, from one different code. You have the labels at the top for uh, in referring to the code that uh, has been used for each one of the simulations. And in each one of the rows, you can see the evolution on redshift from redshift of eight at the top to redshift of four at the bottom. Uh, and you can also see the circle, the dashed circle is basically the BDL radius of the halo we are analyzing. And you see here that the differences are big when referring to the temperature uh, inside the, the BDL radius, for example. And this is basically because of using very different supernovae feedback uh, basics. This is something expected, something that will need to be analyzed and that will have an impact on the final uh, properties of the CGM uh, that we have in this, in this model. For the density, the density, we have a better uh, uh, convergence. In fact, if you go to the paper, in the paper, we plot a histogram of the gas mass density in dens uh, of the gas mass in density bins. And you can see there that the convergence is quite good among codes, in particular in an intermediate range of uh, densities. Uh, the divergences are more in the low density uh, ranges and very high density ranges. That some, is something expected by the differences on the numerical codes that I will talk also a little bit later. After that, we analyze it, uh, another parameter that is metallicity. Important to mention here that we check it that all codes are releasing the same amount of metals per supernovae uh, um, when the supernovae explode. So the amount of metals per supernovae are the same, the metal yields are the same for all the codes. So the differences will be mostly related with the feedback strategies. You can see now at the right, again, the temperature density stays colored by metals. You can see the, that as we, ex like we expect, there are differences at the very low densities, very high temperatures. In this region, that is the very deep intergalactic medium, there is a difference on the sampling that can be provided by the AMR codes and the SPH codes. This is something well known and very expected. You can also observe differences in very high temperature, high density. These are due basically because some of the codes use the delayed cooling recipes while other codes know that doesn't use it. And finally, something that you can observe also is a feature in low temperature, high density, that is basically to um, some, uh, not a problem, but uh, something that will need to be corrected in the future inside the grackle uh, tables we are using. You can find the details of this in the, in the paper, but again, this doesn't imply, uh, uh, it's not very important for our final results in the Cosmo Run because it is at the very high density end in where the star formation already occurs. So it's not, it's not a problem for a cosmological simulation like the one we are presenting here. And at the left, you can see, uh, um, in a histogram of the total gas mass in metallicity bins. And again, you can see conversions in the intermediate metallicities and some divergence at low metallicities and at high metallicities. The divergence at high metallicities is mainly due to differences on the supernovae feedback. So how efficiently the feedback uh, from the supernovae can spread metals to uh, uh, larger volumes. While in the very low metallicities, what happens is that we have differences, again, in a very low density regions, uh, depending on if you use SPH or AMR, and also in the diffusion schemes. So some of the codes are better on diffusing metals than others. So we expect differences in the very low density, uh, very low metallicity end. 
Finally, also another result is with the stellar properties. Here in this uh, slide, you can see at the right, uh, multi-panel plot again with the evolution of the, the stellar um, surface density. Again, for the stellar surface density, we have a very good convergence in most of the, of the properties, the, the total stellar mass that is expected by the calibration for, and also in the location of the stellar structures. But we observe some differences on the measure history. So in some of the codes, due to probably differences on the time steps, we still need to check that. And this will be also another follow-up paper. We have differences on the moments of the major measures we have on the, in each one of the codes. But again, this will be well studied when using the full set of 200 snapshots in where we will be able to build uh, a measure tree for each one of the codes. This will be one of the follow-up papers. And at the left, again, a histogram of um, metallicity of a star being it by, uh, by, by metallicity. So we ha you have here basically convergence now in all the uh, low uh, metallicity. And this is basically um, convergence that we expect because the stars are formed in regions of high density. Uh, and uh, again, um, in this case for the stars, we do not expect divergences in very low uh, metallicities, basically because um, the stars or low metallicities are being formed at very high rates when the supernovas have not had time mm -hmm. to, um, to, uh, uh, to, to get metals from the, from the supernovae feedback. Okay, and finally, although the, the original idea of the Cosmo Run model was to analyze the CGM, as I told you, the CGM will be analyzed in the follow-up paper. Uh, we make only a very first look in this paper. You can go to the paper and, and take a look on that. And we observe basically differences on metallicity. That is basically this multi-panel plot at the, at the top uh, right. And also we observe, we, we look it at the kinematics. For example, here you can see for each one of the codes, the uh, kinematics of the gas, the radial velocity of the gas. In the first panel at the left is the total gas mass. The second panel, so from the left to the right, first panel, all the gas. Second panel, cold gas, that is gas below three times 10 to the four. Third panel, um, cool gas. Uh, fourth panel is the warm gas. And finally, the hot gas that is the one released by the supernovas is the one at the, the right, the rightermost panel is the, the hot gas from the supernovae in where you can see, for example, differences between the blue line that is the art code that is more efficient on driving outflows than, for example, some of the other codes. This will be fully analyzed in the future follow-up paper of the CGM. These are the results uh, we can present and we present in this uh, paper, in this third paper on the collaboration. And we now have many ideas for follow-up papers. Some of the codes are really a rich rigid of two. A secondary goal is to reach rigid of zero, probably some years from now, because uh, the codes get as slow, slower when you reach lower rigid. Also, we already initiated several uh, follow-up papers. I will talk about them uh, very fast in the next slide. And this, the details on, on the next comparisons within the project will be discussed in the next Agora workshop. And again, uh, the new code groups are still in time on catching us up with this new uh, future uh, project. So now, finishing with the presentation, the follow-up papers. The first one is the study of the CGM. We already have the tools. We will use a YT script and also a tool developed by Clayton Strown, that is a PhD student in the, in the UCSC, that is called Quasar Scan that allows you to compute the sidelines of background quasars. So we will be able to compare each one of the models, both uh, between them and also with uh, observations. It is important to mention here that the resolution that we have in this model in the CGM probably will only allow us to study high ionization ions. So this is something important that we will need to discuss in the next uh, Agora workshop. Also important you have here many plots we have on mind to do uh, to analyze the CGM and this is extracted from the Agora workspace that for the moment is just uh, um, allow it, uh, only the people within the collaboration can access to the Agora workspace. But as I told you, you are free to join us if you are enthusiastic on making this kind of comparisons and probably you can uh, um, give us a lot of ideas and, and help us with the, with, the, with the discussion of the science. You can just join, you can ask the, the code, uh, the, the, sorry, the project coordinator and you can enter the collaboration uh, just, just asking it. The second uh, follow-up paper is what we call the re-edition of the Santa Barbara Cluster Project. It's a technical paper, very basic, in where we want to understand why there are differences uh, when you use only a pure collapse model, why you have differences on, for example, shock heating or maybe numerical heating or 
we don't know where, where the source of heating uh, we have uh, comes from. So this is something we are studying in this new paper. We call it technical paper, but it, the idea is to have something similar to the Santa Barbara cluster project that was done back in the 90s. Uh, and that many of the current codes used in the community never went through uh, to a comparison like the one that the people did in the Santa Barbara cluster project. So we need to do this sanity check and we propose all the code groups around the world to come to participate and to do, to, to do this new uh, sanity check for the, their codes. And finally, we have many other ideas for follow-up uh, papers. And again, we want people from other code groups from uh, maybe also using the same code, but different versions to the ones that we are using now in general collaboration to participate. And we, for example, give them the opportunity to make a short presentation, uh, to record a video, a clip with a well-defined science case, telling us the diagnostics that this science case will require, and also information on who will lead these papers. And this is very important because each paper needs a leader that drives the uh, comparison. So everybody that really have this well-defined science case can participate. You can just send an email to the Santa Cruz Galaxy at gmail.com. That is basically the email of the project coordinator and present it in the next Agora workshop. And the future of the Agora, the, the Agora project, uh, I put it here, uh, the uh, a picture of the entrance of the University of California in Santa Cruz. We all, all the people in the Agora project, we miss a lot uh, the UCSC. So we hope next year, 2022, we can again have a meeting, uh, a physical meeting there. This year, again, we will have our workshop, uh, probably in August 12, 13. This information will be published in the, in the Agora uh, webpage. But this year, again, will be virtual. Uh, hopefully, next year, it will be, uh, again, physical. Also, to announce that the paper three will release all the data of this paper three in the coming month. First, only the, the data from calibration steps and these five uh, redshift, eight, seven, six, five, and four. And the future, we also will release the full set of thin time steps. And we are working on having a friendly interface and uh, inside a real level host uh, where to download the data. And finally, just to announce that uh, Jihun Kim, the project coordinator, fully renewed the webpage, a lot of work. And now you can go to the public webpage of the Agora project and see the details of the project. And also, if you are inside the project, you will get, get access to the project workspace in where you have all the details on the comparisons, the details on the initial conditions, et cetera, et cetera. So please uh, feel free to ask to enter the, the, the collaboration and to give us uh, your uh, science to the project. And finally, uh, the summary, uh, we presented this calibration uh, strategy that is designed to reduce the tunable parameters in the, in the simulations. So to make easier the comparison of the final results of the models we are generating. We are, we, I put here, we built a suite of models. Yes, we built a suite of models, but I, I think we started building a large suite of models. Hopefully many more codes will join us and we'll make the same calibration process to get new models and join the future comparisons. And this will allow us to compare and validate new codes and new subject physics that will be probably implemented in the future as uh, when we uh, know better the physics of the galaxy formation. We are starting many follow-up projects and everybody is invited to, uh, to join us and to propose new projects and to enrich these comparisons we are, we are making. And I think that's all. I end just with two very nice movies of the, this Cosmo Run model, only down to Redshift of four. This was produced by Iver Zevat, uh, one of the code leaders in the collaboration. And you can see at the bottom left, the evolution of the gas, the gas evolution, and at the top right, the evolution of the dark matter structures for two codes, one AMR, one SPH, uh, one is Ramses, the other one is uh, a gear. And something you can see, for example, is that the measure time is different in each one of them. That is something we will uh, study in the future. And also that ongoing major measure that happens around the chip of four, that is where we ended our comparison for this project. So the results of this major merger will be presented in the future in the, in the new follow-up projects. So that's all. Uh, thank you for listening. I'm sorry for, uh, I, 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 it was 40 minutes instead of, of 30, but uh, I hope you, uh, it was a nice presentation for you and you could understand more, more or less what, what we are doing and what we are going to do in the, in the future. So thank you. And, and, and now I will take questions by the audience. Thank you, Santi. Uh, 
Uh, any questions, please raise your hand in, in the Zoom. Okay, uh, Jorge, please. Thank you, Octavio. Uh, thank you, Santi, for this very nice presentation. Um, I was wondering, since you have this very nice suite of simulations, did you have any idea or, or have you tried to compare this with actual observations of galaxies? In particular, we have been tackling this, uh, for example, you mentioned in one of the slides, the metallicity gradient, Diana's gas metallicity gradient in galaxies in the nearby universe. So I was wondering if you have you tried or thought uh, to, to explore this uh, comparison between observations and your simulations? Uh, this is a very good question, and uh, probably you could see inside the, the, the follow-up project, the, the possible follow-up projects we are thinking on, that one of them is just to study the metallicity gradients inside galaxies. The point here is that we need to run these models to lower redshift to be able to start doing that, because uh, at redshift of four and having this major merging ongoing at redshift of four, we don't expect to have a very nice disk. But probably, in fact, we have some models that already reach it, reach it of 0.2, for example, as low as 0.2. And we see that a very well, very nice disk is being developed. And we hope in this lower redshift uh, scenario, we will be able to make this kind of comparisons of the metallicity gradients. It's not now, but in the future, we will surely, surely do that. Uh, something that is important is that it is not straightforward to compare each one of the codes with observations. The first goal now is try to find which are the differences among codes. And we are not planning to, to tell this code is better to this uh, other one for the moment. So um, till now the Agora goals are only just uh, the comparison among them and to see which results are converging or not within codes. And the next step will be this comparison with observations, of course, is the, the final goal of that, yes. Not only for the metallicity gradients, also we are thinking on a low redshift to study the stability of disks, for example, the formation of bars, the properties of bars that can be formed at low redshift. And also, for example, as I told you, the, the side, uh, the, the side lines uh, to uh, quasars in the background to observe how the CGM differs from one code to the other. But uh, we need this redshift of two or below to make this kind of comparisons. Okay. Thank you. Luis Aguilar has a question and then Vladimir. Okay, it's really not a question. It's more like a historical comment. Thanks for the talk, Santi. It was very nice, and I'm glad to hear that people are starting to take seriously this business of comparison. Well, the comment I want to make is that I don't know if you are aware about this, but this happened long ago. In the 60s, people were starting to discover what is called now the gravothermal catastrophe in globular clusters where the inner part starts contracting and the envelope uh, expands. And uh, at the beginning, people were not sure about this behavior. Um, they were attributing this to perhaps the details depending on the particulars of the envelope simulation they were using. So Myron Lecar at the CFA, Center for Astrophysics, uh, organized a, a, a joint experiment in which he provided with exactly the same initial conditions and everybody tried with the different N-body codes. And then they have a conference in which they compare all of these results. So this reminds me of, of this. So I congratulate you and your team in, in, in doing this. I think this is very important. If we're going to study something as complicated as the large scale structure of the universe and how everything develops, we better have trust in the tools, the numerical tools that we're using and you guys are providing that. Congratulations again. Thank you a lot. Just to add that basically uh, I kind of lead this uh, collaborative, collaborative effort that is the paper three, but uh, the main uh, contributor to the Agora is Jihong Kim, that is the, the coordinator. And uh, also we have a steering committee, but yes, yes. Uh, it, this this uh, scenario of the 60s reminds me a lot of the Agora, the Agora project. And clearly is something that we need to do. We need to make these comparisons. We, we cannot present results for a single code and say, these are observations. We really need to, to, to know uh, the, which things are or not uh, dependent on the code. Yeah. Well, if things don't coincide with observations, then damn the observations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Maybe the observations are wrong. <laughs>
Vladimir. Okay. Thank you, Santi, for your nice presentation and congratulations to all the collaboration for, the, for this great effort. Um, as for the numerical techniques, uh, did you find some systematical differences in your results in between the AMR and SPH code, something that uh, uh, can tell you that uh, the techniques is affecting your results? Mm -hmm. uh, there, are, there are many, many results that are well known in the community that differs from, from uh, SPH codes and AMR. And of course, we are also suffering of that. For example, the very, very low density regions in the IgM uh, is not the same sampling it with the particles than sampling it with a mesh. So in the mesh, you always can have uh, gas in all the places in the IgM. While, for example, if you have a very, very low density um, mass of the gas in the IgM and your mass resolution is 10 to the 5 uh, solar masses, you'll have one particle in a very big region in the, in the intergalactic medium. So the sampling that can provide an AMR code is different from the one that can provide an SPH. Also, another difference, for example, is that you need to introduce some kind of uh, um, diffusion also in these very low density regions to allow the transmission of metals, for example, between particles in the SPH, which is something, something that is naturally produced in AMR. But on the other way, um, you have, for example, that in SPH, you are able to produce more substructure at higher rates than the one you can produce in the AMR code. Also, we found that there is kind of de uh, a dependence on the strategy for the refinement on how well you trace, for example, the, the shocks at, at very high rate. Shift. But these are the things that you learn when you are doing these comparisons. And knowing that, you can then uh, make a fair comparisons with observations. Yeah, you, you are right that we need to know these things to be able to to be sure of that what we are comparing is uh, something we can compare in fact because it's something not numerical. No? But yeah, yeah, we, we found several of these systematics that most of them are already known and most of them, are, and some of them can be probably uh, discussed in future, in future meetings in the collaboration. Um, also to mention that these uh, differences, um, you can never say that one code is better than the other. And this, these moments in where you find these differences, it's not easy to know if the difference is due to problems on the numerics, is something physical, is something expected. So the, the discussions when you find the difference are, are extremely nice inside the, inside the collaboration and you learn a lot from the other people in the, from the, the other code groups. So these points, the differences are always the most important part of this collaboration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't know if I answered your question. <laughs> yes, 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 yeah. yeah the, the, this, is the prob this is the problem. There is a degeneracy between the numerical techniques and the gastrophysical conditions, yeah, uh, feedback, uh, star formation. So it's, it's but, not but easy. Idea, no, yeah. not at all. And the, the, the point is that in the previous comparisons, um, usually, or in some of the in more, most recent comparisons, there is not this process of calibrating the models. And the calibration, you, you know, I told you that it was five years of collaboration to produce this paper. And most of these five years was to produce the calibration. So to generate a model and to compare a model with others is not as difficult as that. The problem is that you, if you want to calibrate them to reduce the parameter space, this is the, the tricky part. Yeah, 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 right. sure. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you to you. Thanks, Vladimir. Okay, more questions or comments from the audience? In the meantime, I would like to ask you, Santi, is there any plan to do a similar exercise to more massive galaxies and include maybe AGM feedback? Or... Surely you, you have thought about it. Um, I was here only presenting the results of this uh, project that we called Cosmo Run and the possible follow-up papers. But inside the, inside the, the Agora collaboration, if you go to the, the Agora collaboration uh, webpage, the public one, you will see that there are several science cases that are there from the very beginning. And these include more massive halos. These include another kind of uh, isolated uh, models. There are several different projects that can be uh, done inside the collaboration. The big problem always is that you need a leader that leads this effort and that uh, wants to put time on doing that. But yes, the idea of, of making different, of producing simulations of different halos with different masses, lower masses, higher masses, all this is, uh, is inside the, the ideas of the collaboration, yes. 
including the AGN feedback, um, is not as easy as that. Some of the codes doesn't have any version with AGN included, so it's not as easy as that. Uh, it's something that, of course, probably in the future will need to be done. And this is the direction. No, all the codes need to implement AGN at some point because we know that it has a strong impact in the inner regions. But uh, for now, it will be quite difficult to get a comparison among codes that include the AGNs and, uh, for example, black holes formation. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other question or comment? Okay, if, if there is no the, another question, the, we thank Santi for the interesting presentation.